Hey folks, I want to study this incredible opening because there is a lot going on with the layers that make up this shot. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description so you can go watch this video in its entirety. So when examining layout design, you can see lower contrast and fewer details way in the back. The opposite happens with the foreground elements. You're going to see way more detail and a stronger contrast with those objects that are closer to camera. So let's look at the colors in the background. The jump in terms of light and dark is very, very low. It's minimal, as opposed to those foreground color jumps. The value, it gets way darker versus lighter when you're closer to the camera. Details work with the same opposing relationship. Stuff that's closer to the camera is highly detailed while stuff far away has softer edges and a lower resolution. Hard edges are going to help you create a crisp line in details with objects that are in the foreground. When looking at moving pieces, notice how slowly the background changes. Foreground elements come in and go out of frame in a short amount of time. In some cases, you can blur the edges in order to simulate focal depth. Here's an exercise that I have my animation students do when studying. Just pick a good camera move from a film that you like and pause as the background changes. Next, take a screenshot of the composition and paste it into some kind of a document like Storyboard Pro or Photoshop or Google Slides. As you stitch the whole thing together, it's going to give you insights into the layout, background, layers, and camera moves. Once you're done with that, just go and rebuild it in a multi-layer drawing. Let's open up Storyboard Pro and import our Photoshop drawing. Make sure that you import the images as layers so you can do this multi-plane camera trick. You should also take a quick look at your layers and make sure that they have the visual information that you want. I recommend labeling your layers. In the bottom right, hit the plus sign and turn on the timeline. You can add time for your shot by stretching the clip. Take note of the timestamp in the panel menu and in the timeline. These numbers will change as you stretch the clip in the timeline. In this last segment, I'll use the camera transform tool to shrink and position the camera at the start of my shot. I can hit the plus sign in the timeline to get the next keyframe. After that, I'll just scrub the playhead in the timeline to the end of the shot and then I'll hit the plus sign again and it'll give me a second keyframe. I'll go ahead and grab the camera frame and move it into position and just like that, I've got movement. I can go back and refine the camera movement by moving the playhead to the middle of my shot. Don't forget, I still have the camera transform tool selected, so that's how I'm adjusting the camera frame to the desired location. After a few cycles of watching, nudging the camera, doing it all over again, I can move on to the next stage, which is the layer animation. So layer animation works in the same manner as when you do a camera move. With the layer selected, I'll use the transform tool to move the artwork. I'll press the plus sign at the start and at the end time of when the artwork is gonna do its thing. At each keyframe, I will adjust the location of the artwork. It takes a little while to figure this out, but once you kind of get going with it, you'll be able to finesse it. So the big idea when animating stuff is that timing and spacing are related. Here's a little bonus tip for you. If you right click on a layer, you can apply blur effects and I would recommend you experiment because it's a really fun tool to have in your films. Um, I went with a smaller radius, but you should try to experiment and see what works for you. And since I can't resist, I just want to show you, let's just look at all the camera work and then let's look at the background and reveal it so that way you get a sense of how all of this comes together. I'm gonna to turn on the camera mask and then click, click, click so you can kind of see all of the individual shots that build and make up the finished film. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you. Do me a favor, go find a film with a camera move that you really like, study it, build out the layers, come up with a plan, and then animate that shot. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.